Hey guys, this is Giovanni from GeekBeat. We are at Cedia right now. We're gonna to talk to an expert who used to work for the FAA, who now deals with folks trying to get certifications, exemptions, things like that to fly drones. And we're gonna ask her what she really thinks about all those yahoos that are flying out there without licenses. Welcome to GeekBeat. Hi hey guys, so I'm here with Christina from UA Solutions Group and She's got a great background for folks like me who have no business flying drones, but who do it anyway. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about um, what someone like me can expect. So my background is I've been shooting video for years. Drones came on the market, super big eye candy for me. Great way to get video. Um, I read what I what, what I, I read the different um, articles that tell me best practices, what I should do, what I shouldn't do. I've got apps on my phone that tell me where the no-fly zones are, so I make sure that I don't that I don't do anything that's inappropriate in that situation. However, I still know that I'm doing it illegally on some level, right? I mean, um, we try to you know I'm giving away too much on the episode, but you know I will never charge a client for the the video that I I publish or that I create. But sometimes if they find it on Vimeo and they want to use it, so be it, you know, let them use it, whatever. So there, there's a lot of ways that we're skirting what we think are regulations, but we're not sure. We think they're laws, but they're either not enforced equally or we get conflicting messages from the FAA. So help me out a little bit. Um, I know that the perfect solution is for me to ground the drone and wait for a couple of years till the FAA tells me what I'm able to do. But obviously that's not happening. So kind of give me some guidance as a Yahoo, a consumer, that has one of these things in their hands, um, what would your best advice be somebody, and what can I expect in the next 12, 24 months from the FAA as far as when they're gonna have something out and what I'm gonna have to do to actually be certified to be able to fly my drone? Holy cow, those are a lot of questions. First, I'd like to thank- I will repeat all of them. <laughs> thank you, so Giovanni, thank you and GeekBeat for having me mm -hmm. on today, I really appreciate it. And first, you're not a Yahoo. You know, first, I really want to commend you for reaching out and embracing this technology. You've taken something that you've, you've had a passion for, which is photography and videography, and you just see this as another tool in your toolbox, and that's what it is. It is this other tool in your toolbox to use, and we want to use that, and we want people like you to use them. The thing is, you need to use them correctly and not skirt the rules and regulations. So there, there are two classes of people. Either you're hobby and recreation or you're not, all right? So, so when you fly and you give your video to somebody, if that's in furtherance of your business at all, if it helps your business, if it promotes your business, even if you don't get paid, it is not hobby and recreation and it's considered commercial. What I meant was that I never did that before. <laughs> You meant that you were thinking about it, yeah. right? If you I had, had a friend. friend. <laughs> I had a friend that did that one. Friend, right? <laughs> so that's where Stampede is seen with, with UA Solutions Group because we help you bridge that gap and we let you know, hey, we understand that the rules are confusing and we understand that the FAA hasn't always been um, exact, exacting in the way that they explain what you can and cannot do. And um, the pan. Um, there's a company called, and I apologize the name of it, but they just received a $1.9 million yeah, fund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at that, the FAA went back two years mm -hmm. and gathered all of that data, even though they do have an exemption today, yeah. Yeah. right? The FAA went prior to that, and they looked at two years back, and, and, they, and they went after them, and it was a $1.9 million fine. And I would assume that the majority of us don't have that kind of money laying around for a large well, fine. most of y'all don't. Most of us, right? <laughs> And so, um, you know, I tell people you can either you can either get a twenty five hundred dollar exemption or a three thousand dollar exemption for, through Stampede and through UA Solutions Group, what, what we offer, or you can risk that fifty thousand dollar fine. And even though you say, oh, you know, I'm waiting for the regulations to come out, and in the meantime, I'm going to skirt the regulations, or in the meantime, I'm going to kind of stay on the down low. We're finding out today that the FAA is going after is going after you, and they're backlogged in that office right now. They're very being very methodical and careful on how they how they go after these people, but they are definitely going after them. So we do not recommend that. We have not recommended that practice for a long time. Yeah, certainly, I think that nobody would recommend that. You know, from a consumer standpoint, I think part of the challenge is, is that. You know, and of course, all this is from you know third party. You read about things that have happened, and you, in some of the the challenges that you get conflicting messages from different representatives at the FAA. Some will say 
yes, we're going to issue, you know, issue you a notice that you should stop flying. Some, there, there was one in Houston that actually came back and said, well, we issued the notice, but there's no force behind it. We can't do anything about it. And I remember that was probably about two years ago that, that came out. There was some, some conflict there. So, you know, and, and even to the point now to where there's some confusion in as much as I'm, you know, pay attention to the news, there's still confusion about whether or not there is a law on the books today that allows the FAA even to issue the $1.9 million fine. Now, they can issue the fine. Whether or not they get held up in court, we'll find out, because certainly they're not just going to write a check and be done with it. So I think that's part of the confusion. And the fact that the industry is so far ahead of the FAA now, the next question is, is that how difficult will it be? And let's say you've got someone who is well-meaning, who is fairly intelligent, who wants to be able to fly these safely, Am I going to have to get a pilot's license and spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars and hours in the air? Because like in Australia, I understand that you have to have a commercial pilot's license to fly drones. So get your feeling from what the FAA is doing. What kind of level of expertise and training do you think is going to be required for me to go out and fly around a home for a real estate agency and, and collect 250 bucks for that? Yeah, so that is actually a really good question. The reason that you currently have I'm glad to have, you have all the answers. Too. <laughs> I do not have all the answers. Wait, I want to start with one thing. Yeah. Hey, everybody, stop reading the blogs. Yeah. Okay, just stop. Okay, just stop reading but all it's those on the blogs. Internet. I know it's on the internet. It must be true, right? <laughs> so stop reading the blogs. Talk to the experts. And one of the things we tell everybody is uh, the what we say today because of what the FAA is doing might not be what the FAA says tomorrow. Yeah. We have seen the FAA change quickly and they're adapting. Originally the exemptions came out, you needed a commercial pilot's license and then you needed a private. You know, and we're all the way down to, you know, sport recreation, those type of licenses. So, you know, one day I say you need a commercial license and the next day the FAA comes out and says pilot license. So that's why these blogs are so confusing. If, if people aren't embedded with the FAA and they don't have that insider knowledge and those people to contact, you, you're not going to know what's happening. And one thing that, that UA Solutions Group prides themselves on is if we don't know the answer, we're going to tell you. Yeah. We don't know the answer, but we know who to call. You and know I would assume exactly that a lot of folks at the FAA don't have the answers yet because oh, they're figuring it out. You're right. There are so many times that we've called the FAA and they said, oh, we've never thought of that, or we don't know the answer to that, yeah. or oh my gosh, we we don't know the answer, okay. right? So so then we just get back to our clients and we say the FAA is looking into it because this is new technology. This is new ground for them also. And everybody is so upset with the FAA, but you got to remember, this is new to them also. Yeah. And they're trying to figure this out as best as they can mm -hmm. and give best practices for industry mm -hmm. so that we have money. But I know that the, the pilot's license is a big concern. Yeah. The rule, the law right now says in order for you to fly an aircraft, which drones are yeah. aircraft, in order for you to fly aircraft in the national airspace, you have to be a rated aviator. You so have to have an airman's certificate. So is national airspace six inches off the ground? From the, tip of the, from the tip of the blade of, gra of grass. Is it really? Okay. It is from the surface up. Okay. So long as you're outside. If and you're not inside, to get anyone it's not in the trouble. You're not associated with them, but if I go to CES, and company X within a confined area inside has got a salesperson flying a drone for demo purposes. Am I to assume that that person has an exemption to fly that thing? Because it's for commercial, they're, they're, they're showing products to sell. So is it my assumption that that person has got a certification or an exemption? No, because they're inside. Really? Yes. Okay. So here's so what's funny. So if I'm flying if inside the Cowboys Stadium. I was just going to say, if you're inside of a stadium and the drone and the dome is closed, mm -hmm. you're okay. As soon as they open up that dome, that dome. you're no longer okay. That is That's when you have to interesting have an and ridiculous. <laughs> okay. It's because the laws haven't caught up to industry yet. Mm. This is so new, and it takes a long time to get a law on the books. What if it we really build a does. drone that has like a canopy over it? <laughs> so that, 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 you know, and like, I've heard and like a, a lot. Curtain. That's the first one I've heard, right? It's, uh, you know, I mean, if, if, <laughs> if it's the roof, if I just build a canopy over the drone, we can work on that. It's going to be a project for John. Thank you very much for yeah, chatting with us a little welcome. bit. You're welcome. You have any more questions, let us know. Absolutely. This has been Giovanni with Geek Beat, and this is Christina. I remember without looking at your name tag. <laughs> Christina, y'all are at UAS Solutions Group. Is it UAS Solutions UA Group? UAS Solutions Group. UAS Solutions Group.com? Mm -hmm. All right. So visit Stampede first. Okay. Stampede first, and then go straight over to your website. Do they need to look <laughs> at anything at Stampede? Yeah, they need to look at drones. Okay, look, purchase a drone, then go to their website. This has been Geek Beat. Thank you, guys.